This section discusses a different application of chi-square distribution. We use it for independence tests. A national survey was conducted to obtain information on the alcohol consumption patterns of U.S. adults by marital status. A random sample of 1,772 residents 18 years old and older yielded the data. The marital status has four categories, namely single, married, widowed, and divorced. The alcohol consumption has three categories, namely abstain, 1 to 60 drinks per month, or over 60 drinks per month. We just want to know whether marital status and alcohol consumption are associated. Here, the non-hypothesis is that marital status and alcohol consumption are not associated. And the alternative hypothesis is that marital status and alcohol consumption are associated. The logic for the test is similar to the good missile fit test. The table shows the observed frequencies. If we can find expected frequencies under the non-hypothesis, we can compare the observed frequencies with expected frequencies to see whether they are close. Therefore, we need a way to calculate expected frequencies. We first list the formula to calculate the expected frequencies. It is a product of row total and column total divided by the total sample size. Let's use an example to illustrate why this formula makes sense. Consider the cell married and abstain. A reasonable estimate of the probability of abstain is the sample proportion, or the number of persons abstain in the sample divided by the total sample size. It is 590 divided by 1772. If no association exists between marital status and alcohol consumption, we can calculate the expected frequency for married and abstain using the number of married times the probability of abstain. It is exactly the product of the number of married and the number of abstain divided by the total sample size. We can see it exactly follows the formula we give at the top of the slide. Apply the formula for, for expected frequencies to each cell of the table to get the expected frequencies. We get this table. For each cell, there are two numbers. The first number is the observed frequency, and the second number is the expected frequency. For example, the expected frequency for married and abstain is 1173 times 590 divided by 1,772 equals 390.6. We can calculate the test statistic for comparing observed frequencies with expected frequencies. It is similar to the one we used for the goodness of fit test. It is the sum of O minus E squared divided by E. We Calculate this quantity for each cell of the table. There are 12 cells within the thick black lines. Therefore, we need to calculate 12 such terms and then add them together. The test statistic is 94.4. Similar to the goodness of fit test, the test statistic approximately follows a chi-square distribution. The degrees of freedom, however, is different. It is r minus 1 times c minus 1, while r and c are the number of possible values for the two variables under consideration. This slide lists the steps for chi square independence test. It is used to test whether two categorical variables are independent. It assumes that all expected frequencies are one or greater and at most 20% of the expected frequencies are less than 5. These assumptions are used to make sure that the test statistic approximately follows a chi-square distribution. The assumption also includes simple random sample. The non- and alternative hypothesis are fixed. The non-hypothesis is 
that the two variables are not associated. The alternative hypothesis is that the two variables are associated. We need to decide on the significance level alpha. Usually, alpha equals 0 0.05. Occasionally, alpha equals 0.1 or 0 0.01. Then, we need to compute the value of the test statistic. It is denoted by chi square 0. It is the sum of O minus E square divided by E, where O and E represent observed and expected frequencies. We can draw a conclusion uh, using either the critical value approach or p-value approach. First, make sure that degrees of freedom is r minus 1 times c minus 1, where r and c are the number of possible values for the two variables. We can use a chi-square table to find the, chi the, critical distribution, uh, the critical value. The rejection region is always larger than the critical value. If the test statistic is larger than the critical value, we reject H0. Otherwise, do not reject H0. When using the p-value approach, the p-value is the probability larger than the test statistic. The degrees of freedom is r-1 times c-1, while r and c are the number of possible values for the two variables. If the p-value is less than the significance level alpha, reject H0. Otherwise, do not reject H0. Last, make sure to interpret the result of the hypothesis test. In the example of marital status and drinking, at the 5% significance level, do the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that an association exists between marital status and alcohol consumption. We have already calculated the test statistic. It is 94.4. Notice that r equals 3 and c equals uh, r equals 4 and c equals 3, which are the number of categories for marital status and alcohol consumption respectively. The significance level is alpha equals 0 0.05. The degrees of freedom is r minus 1 times c minus 1 equals 6. Using the critical value approach, the critical value is chi square 0 0.05. We can find its value using a chi square table. It is 12.592. The test statistic is larger than 12.592. It falls in the rejection region. Therefore, we reject H0. When using the p-value approach, the p-value is 0. We can calculate it using Excel. It is 1 minus chi square dot dist 94.4, 6, and 2. The p-value is less than the significance level alpha. We reject H0. Both approaches lead to the rejection of H0. At the 5% significance level, the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that marital status and alcohol consumption are associated. We have some final comments. We have two assumptions about expected frequencies, namely, all expected frequencies are 1 or greater, and at most 20% of the expected frequencies are less than 5. In practice, the assumption may not hold. It, if it happens, Try the following tricks to solve the issue. We may combine rows or columns to increase the expected frequencies in those cells in which they are too small. We may eliminate certain rows or columns in which the small expected frequencies occur, and we may increase the sample size. Last, I want to emphasize that association does not necessarily imply causation. In the example, we concluded that the variables marital status and alcohol consumption are associated. This result means that drinking, uh, the result means that knowing the marital status of a person imparts information about the alcohol consumption of that person, and vice versa. 
It does not necessarily mean, however, for instance, that being single causes a person to drink more. Also, we must uh, keep in mind that association does not imply causation. We must also note that if two variables are not associated, there is no point in looking for a causal relationship. In other words, association is a necessary but not sufficient condition for causation.